All right, so here's a short video on the Dyne 8, uh, specifically on an Allen and Heath uh, Avantis, or Avantis, however you pronounce it. Go ahead and comment below. Uh, so first off, um, I'm assuming that the viewer has a pretty good grasp on um, compression, uh, threshold, ratio, attack, release, etc., as well as PEQ. Uh, that said, let's dive in. Uh, the Dyn8 is a multiband compressor and dynamic EQ in one. Uh, the Avantis has uh, 16 instances of this, engines if you will. Uh, DLive uh, has 64. So the top half on the overview screen is the compressor. Bottom half is the dynamic EQ. Uh, so what you get is basically four compressors. Each is able to be set to a different band. You have three crossovers and they all slide within. And within that, you'll recognize it's basically just a compressor uh, in each band. You have your threshold, your makeup gain, and your ratio. Hard knee, soft knee. Uh, here are your attack and release times. Uh, you also have the ability to, uh, you can set auto, you know, opto, punch, etc. Uh, another thing you'll notice, oh, you can also set your slopes. Um, one thing you'll notice is this, uh, these buttons along here, the self and split buttons. Uh, first off, the self versus external. Self means that it'll act upon itself. Uh, it's the bass guitar. This, you set this threshold. When this frequency hits that threshold, it acts on whatever parameters you set. For external, you're able to key to an external source. In this case, I have the bass low end keyed to the kick drum. And what that means is that when that kick drum gets to this threshold you set on that channel, then it'll act upon whatever other parameters you set. Um, and each band has the ability to be keyed externally or by itself. Um, and each instance of the Dyne 8 can be keyed to one source. Like you can't do kick on this band and vocals on this band. It's either, in this case, kick or self. So what I did here is I keyed just the low end of this bass. Uh, for example, you know, anything 65 hertz and below to be keyed by the kick drum. I have a virtual sound check here running. So every time the kick hits, it just ducks that low end out of the rain. And of note is that these settings are, are sort of exaggerated for visual purposes. So if you just plug in these settings into yours, it's, it's probably not going to make sense. So food for thought there. Um, so right now the kick, in fact, will make more sense if you can hear it. So the kick is triggering the low end. And then these other three bands are just acting upon its own input. So uh, that said, it's pretty common practice. Um, I don't necessarily share this technique with the bass players <laughs> on that gig. Um, if, if they're not familiar with the process, they may think that you're uh, taking something away from their sound or their performance, where if done correctly, nobody will notice. The only thing they'll notice is a punchier kick drum. And you'll notice that your subs aren't overworked and you have a more well-balanced mix. So for starters, that's how I would use it on the bass. I don't believe I have any dynamic on this channel. Let's go over to vocals for that. What you can do with the dynamic, the Dyn EQ, is, um, first of all, the, it's kind of similar to the compressor in that you have your threshold uh, and amount of cut or boost, etc. So one thing I like doing with the dynamic EQ here on vocals is if you have a vocalist who uh, who has certain frequencies, say high mids, that get louder as they get louder, but they're fine at normal levels, you can set it to duck it as it gets to a certain threshold. Much like a compressor, but you can really fine tune it and notch it out a little better, uh, in my opinion. And um, you'll also notice that uh, this also has the self and split split versus wide and self versus external buttons. Uh, in this case, it's all self and, and split. So this upcoming audio sample is uh, Gordon Sterling and Friends from an improv set they did a couple years back. 
Um, it should also say that uh, Gordon's voice is amazing, and I don't, I'm not saying that he has, you know, issues in his frequencies. I'm really just using him as an example to watch the compressor. So that said, uh, let's go ahead and hear it and watch it. So you get the idea. Um, now, on this lower band, what you get a lot of times is when there's a vocalist who sings quietly sometimes, they'll get closer to the mic and you'll get that, that proximity effect where it gets really boomy because they're right on the mic and, uh, and they're a little softer too. Uh, and then when they start howling and they step back and they get louder, um, you want that low end because for the same reason that sometimes you get too much high end, that's sort of the way a lot of vocalists work. So if you were to notch that out completely, they'd sound a little thin as they got louder. So in this case, that's when I'd use the below, where it'll cut this sort of boominess until they get louder. And again, you'll see that here and a little exaggerated. So, you get the idea. Let's see, another way I like to use the multiband is uh, over on my buses. Let's see here, guitar bus. What I'd like to do here is, on the compressor, is I'll externally key a frequency here and key it to the vocal. Um, in this case, I have it to the vocal group, but you. I'll usually just do like lead vocal. Uh, for the same way we did bass to duck out of the way of the kick, I've got the guitar bus, which is all the guitars, um, ducking out of the way of the vocals. A lot of times when you have a bunch of guitars going, they can cover up, muddy up the vocals. So I just have this band here that'll act on the vocals to just duck the guitars out of the way. And again, you don't have to share this with guitarists. Uh, for you guitarists watching, don't worry, I'm not ruining your sound. Uh, if done correctly, you won't even notice it. But you'll see here, it's just tucking that frequency out of the guitar bus, just enough to let that vocal punch through a little bit. And again, these frequencies and settings won't make sense. Um, you have to listen to it. It depends on the vocalist, it depends on the guitars, everything. Um, I also do this sometimes on the keyboard bus for the same reason. Um, but this also depends. Is it a piano? Is it a Leslie, a boomy organ, whatever? Um, at any rate, it's just another trick you can do to not squash the whole, all the dynamics of that instrument bus, but it just helps it to shine through. So. I guess that's it in a nutshell. Um, I know I kind of ran through this, so if I skipped over anything or if you have any questions, just uh, throw a comment below and uh, I'll get back to you. All right. Cheers.